hello. Um, I feel a little awkward right now because I'm so scared to film this video. I always get like the nerves before filming any video, which is so weird because it's been 10 years. Like, come on. As you can see by the title, today we're going to be talking about my spiritual journey as an atheist. This has been highly, highly requested ever since I shared a little bit about my perspective on this journey on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm scared to preemptively make this video, although it has been over a year now that I've been on this journey. Although I think it's like a lifelong journey and I'll explain why and like my history with it and things like that. But I'm scared to preemptively make it um, because it has only been a year that I've really been into it. But I do, I don't think it's a phase. Like I don't think maybe the next phase in my life, right? But I think from here on out, I'll always kind of identify as somewhat spiritual, um, definitely not heavily on the spiritual side, but I thought I would make a video explaining uh, my spirituality a little bit and s me still identifying as an atheist. I also thought that I would always keep this personal because I am someone who believes that spirituality religion, anything like that is a very personal thing and I think it should be kept mostly personal. I didn't even tell my partner or my friends about this that I was like really getting into spirituality um, until way like recently. So, <laughs> but I am a believer in doing things that scare you and if I'm scared to make it a video, then it's probably a video that I should be making. So before we get into the video though, we have a very exciting brand new sponsor here on the channel. So I just wanna thank Hunt a Killer for sponsoring this video. You'll see why I'm so excited to have this sponsor because Lionsgate teamed up with Hunt a Killer and they made a Blair Witch game. I actually bought all six chapters for myself last year with my own money. So when they reached out, I knew I had to work with them. Obviously I'm obsessed with horror movies. You guys know this. I have a whole horror channel if you're new here. I like, you know, horror movies. I love The Blair Witch Project. It's one of my favorite horror movies. So if you're like me and you're looking for some horror related activities that you can do from home, whether you live alone or with your partner or roommates or anything like that, these are designed to be able to do them solo as well. They kind of remind me of escape rooms in a way, which I miss so much. I love a good escape room, uh, just with like the puzzles you have to do. Because I love escape rooms and I love the Blair Witch Project, I kind of thought it'd be kind of easy for me, but it was actually really challenging at times. So it's really, really fun. So there's cryptic documents, there's audio recordings you have to listen to and unsettling puzzles you have to solve. And you're trying to help Rosemary Kent find her son who disappeared in the Black Hills Forest. And I love that I can feel like I'm solving a mystery in the Blair Witch universe. Like I'm obsessed with it. So make sure you go to huntakiller.com slash Hawkinson and use my code Hawkinson for 20% off your first box. All right, now back to the spirituality. So I can safely say that if you told me five years ago or even one year ago that I would be sitting here making this video, even a month ago that I would be sitting here making this video, I would have laughed in your face because although I was starting my journey a year ago and I was confident in it, kind of, I was in denial for a really long time that that's what was going on. I never would have thought I would ever be public about my journey ever, which is weird because I'm so open with everything else about my life pretty much with you guys. So for me to feel so reserved about something, even still, I'm a little bit nervous and I'm like thinking, should I keep this more personal? Because it is very, very personal. Like, like I said, with religion, spirituality, everything like that, I think it's pretty personal and it's different for everyone. I have never in my adult life identified as spiritual. So I have very complex feelings about sharing this publicly. Firstly, it's a little bit embarrassing. I don't know why I have this feeling of embarrassment. Like I'm worried that people are gonna see this in my real life and I'm gonna be embarrassed that I now identify as spiritual. I don't know why it's embarrassing because I don't think there's anything embarrassing about it. I think because in my real life, I'm not embarrassed by it. I talk to my friends about it, my partner, they're all very supportive. So there's really no embarrassment that should be like attached to this journey. But I think part of it is because I was always so hardcore about being an atheist my whole life since I was 15. Like I have always identified as being an atheist and that has been such a huge 
not not even a huge part of my identity because it's not really an identity it's a lack of beliefs so there's no belief system so there's no practicing anything there's no <laughs> believing in anything so it really wasn't like an identity um, I think that some people take on of being an atheist for me it was just I didn't believe in anything so it wasn't like a huge thing but I was very hardcore about not believing anything and being logical and scientific and very like science oriented. The second reason why I'm scared to make this video is that I've already received backlash and criticism from other atheists who have criticized me about my journey that I've, I've barely shared anything about it and I already got criticism. So I'm like terrified to make this and open myself up to that kind of criticism because it's a vulnerability that I'm so not familiar with. I have never once been judged for my beliefs because as an atheist there are no beliefs so i've never been judged for that except for maybe like on my past atheist videos uh people you know talking about their religion in a judgmental way towards me but that has never offended me because i don't believe in anything so if you want to have an opinion about me not believing in anything that's fine but for me to go through this spirituality and have beliefs now that are very different and contradictory to what i used to believe yet mean so much to me i'm scared to be judged for that so i just want to say please be respectful and kind of everyone's beliefs because we're all so different and i just want everyone to feel safe to talk about their beliefs here even if you disagree with me or you uh, have differing opinions to me all beliefs and opinions are valid and welcome here uh, as long as we're all respectful and kind to one another okay so why am i even making this video if i'm so scared to do it it's because when i shared my journey, just like a little bit about my journey, I received hundreds, I'm not joking, hundreds of messages. I could not keep up. I don't even think I read them all, which is so rare. So I wanted to make this to kind of define what this means to me, what spirituality means to me, how it's affected me or helped me, uh, my personal interpretation of it. And I know it'll resonate with a lot of you because I already received hundreds of messages just on social media. So I know this will be very a very familiar feeling to a lot of you and maybe will put some of those feelings into words for you because I know it's a very complicated uh, relationship to be an atheist and be spiritual. Like it's just usually wouldn't work, but it does, I don't know. So like all my videos, we're gonna go back in time to my childhood. So I uh, used to be somewhat religious, actually. I read the Bible when I was like 12. I don't know, I was into it. And then I identified as spiritual, actually, when I was around 14 or 15, and I was really interested in Wicca. And my mom was very supportive. She bought me books on Wicca, bought me some supplies so I could practice uh, some spells and things like that. And I think this derived from the fact that I have always, even throughout my atheism, my whole entire life since a child, been connected to nature. Like it is something that is so powerful. Obviously every human is connected to nature in some way. We come from nature. It's grounding for us to be in nature or look at nature. There are studies done that even just looking at photos of trees can reduce your cortisol levels. So every single person is connected to nature. Whether they admit that they like nature or not, we're all connected to it. But I have felt such a pull to nature my whole life. So I think that's why I really gravitated towards Wicca as a religion because it's very mother earth based and like Gaia based and like just nature and using crystals and natural things to uh, practice your spirituality and your religion. So when I was younger, I saw mother nature as a higher power and I, believed in a higher power at that time in my teen years, early teens. And now I don't believe in a higher power, like a single sentient thinking thing that is aware of my presence and my um, existence. I don't think that exists still, even though I am more spiritual now. Um, I just, I don't believe in like one higher power. But that's why I still identify as an atheist because I don't believe there is a god or a higher power at all maybe the universe but beyond that 
I don't think so. So my identity now is a spiritual atheist. So I've talked about my atheist journey as well on this channel before, but just all it took was a freshman year biology class where they talked about evolution and I was like, yep, that's it. That's what I believe and I believe in nothing else, just science. I've still always felt that pull to nature, you know, uh, that connection. I've always had crystals my whole life through my teen years, through my atheism. I've always, always, always had crystals and I don't necessarily use them for healing. I've taken a crystal course in the past for crystal healing. I don't know if I believe in their power in that way, um, but I just really enjoy having them in my house. I can't explain it, but I will talk more about tools uh, in later in this video. Sorry, I got distracted by someone walking by. So let's talk about what started this current journey that I'm on and why I identify as spiritual now. So back in early 2020, I think before the panoramic started, I came across a pick a card tarot reading in my recommended on YouTube. And pretty much the rest is history. That's where it started, a YouTube video. I think it was Vanessa Semina, uh, Love Her, or Stargirl the Practical Witch. And I just felt really drawn to it. Like I couldn't deny that I was really curious. So I watched it and because I did, more and more videos were recommended to me from different creators and I started watching them. And I thought, for entertainment. It turned into something more than that. But in the beginning, I was very much in denial and I'm like, oh, this is just for fun. You know, I'm just, you know, entertained by these tarot readings, astrology readings, you know, they would do Zodiac stuff too, which I've always been interested in, never believed in it. Um, but now I'm starting to kind of dabble in that as well. And fun fact, I actually didn't subscribe to any of these channels until maybe two weeks ago. Like that's when I admitted to myself that I like these videos and I wanna support these creators. So I'm going to finally subscribe so I could see their videos. Like <laughs> I was in denial for a really, really, really long time. And if you've ever identified as an atheist for most of your life and for your entire adult life, and then you all of a sudden have this like realization, it's really, really hard to accept. So I, over a year, I've been in denial of what this journey actually means to me and what it's done for me. I would justify my interest in these things to my partner and I'd be like embarrassed if he saw that I was watching a tarot reading and stuff like that, which is so silly because like he's not gonna judge me. In fact, he got into tarot before I ever did. I was not interested in tarot at all and he bought a deck, the first deck that I have was because he bought it. <laughs> he wanted to get into tarot long before I did. So one of the reasons why I am drawn to just being spiritual in and of itself um, is the connection to the universe and space. If you know me, I'm obsessed with space, everything about it pretty much, and I have always been drawn to the universe and space and looking up at the stars. I have multiple um, star apps on my phone prior to being spiritual. It's just so fun to me to look and see where the planets are in the sky. So that's one part of spirituality that I can really get behind. Uh, even scientifically, you know, I've always been a fan of astronomy and why not throw astrology into there? You know, like maybe the planets can affect us. I don't know. But I do find it truly fascinating, our relation to the universe. And of course, the impact that us being on our planet Earth can have on us as well. And of course, spirituality uh, and how I define it is being very connected to earth and nature itself because obviously it's our home planet maybe there's theories I don't know I believe it's our home planet I just think that the theories of how we got here are really fun to delve into I mean they just recently found water on an asteroid which could harbor bacteria so maybe we came in on an asteroid we don't know. I'm just kidding. I do believe that we evolved on this planet, but I just really like space and thinking about other origins and life out there. But this is something that's always been a part of me, being drawn to nature and earth and things like that has always been a part of me through atheism as well. So maybe I was spiritual all along and I just didn't know. And it was just a different type of spirituality that I just wasn't identifying for myself or defining. So let's talk tools, shall we? So tarot, let's start with tarot. I see tarot as not even a spiritual practice. Like nothing about tarot to me is actually very spiritual. I see it more as 
I see it as the, like the least spiritual tool and a lot of people seem to think of it as very spiritual. And personally, I don't think it's the universe pulling the cards for me. I think it's me being drawn to cards, pulling them, and then I use them as a tool to work through whatever problem I'm thinking of in the moment. I love thinking about the psychology behind tarot and how we interpret the cards for our given problem or situation. It, they're so amazing for guidance and introspection, like journaling, self-discovery, self-improvement. This is what I use tarot for. I don't use it as a means to an end or an explanation as to why something is happening or what is gonna happen in two weeks from now. Let me pull, oh, okay, that's gonna happen. Nothing is ever set in stone with tarot. It's just an interpretation of what you see in the cards yourself. So if you don't know where to start and you do kind of wanna get into spirituality, tarot is amazing because it doesn't even have to be spiritual at all. You could just pull random cards, whatever you want, interpret how that applies to whatever you're thinking about. They're almost like journaling prompts to me, tarot in a way, like I'll think about a spread that I wanna do and then I'll journal about what cards I pulled and how that applies and how I can work through something. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I've had very, very meaningful tarot pulls and some blew me away, some have made me cry. Uh, it's just whatever comes out and yeah. So why don't I show you the tarot decks that I have? I have four, two major arcana decks and then two basic regular uh, decks that have crystals on them. Not for anything in particular. I, like I said, I just love having crystals. This one I've had probably half my life was my mom's. Uh, my mom has always loved amethyst, so I've always been drawn to amethyst. I think it's beautiful. This crystal I've had the longest, probably since I was 10 years old. So I have a Harry Potter major arcana. This is like the least serious of the uh, tarot decks that I have. I don't, I haven't really used it yet, but they're very gorgeous. And I mean, I just, I had to have it. I got these cards on Etsy. I will link them down below. This is Ryan's deck that he bought in San Francisco. This is just everyday tarot. Just a simple, very straightforward, very minimal illustrations. And I really love the booklet that comes with this. I find that it's some of the most accurate and like best described uh, depictions of the cards and things like that and just easy for beginners. So this is a great deck for beginners. This is one of my favorite decks that I received. This I actually got in PR, which I think is so fun. I think it's for the craft. I got this in PR um, for the new movie that just recently came out. This is the one that I use the most. It is your basic kind of deck, your typical uh, illustrations, very standard deck, but that's why I like it. I use it the most because it's very, um, I don't know, standard. And then sometimes I will pull from my terror, tarot, which is a tongue twister. This is a horror themed major arcana deck. And they're very, very beautiful. They have a nice detailed guidebook to the illustrations themselves and what they depict and what they mean, which is phenomenal. I mean, the art in these are so incredible. And obviously the moon. Oh gosh, the moon uh, illustration, beautiful. And these I found on Etsy as well, and I will link down below as well. The next tool we're gonna talk about, meditation. So meditation is another tool that doesn't have to be spiritual. There are so many studies that show, scientific, scientific based studies that show that meditation actually is very beneficial. And there's a lot of evidence behind meditation as a practice that benefits cortisol levels and mental illness. Um, obviously that is kind of a controversial thing because you wouldn't just met, like recommend meditation to someone who has chronic depression or anything like that, but you know, mild symptoms of mental illness or me working through seasonal depression, for instance, it does help. And I know it's like a generic piece of advice, but if you've ever had a really successful meditation session, you know the impact that it can have. And this is actually one of the most helpful tools that I've learned through this journey because I have meditated for years and years, not well, and it wasn't until I did it more as a spiritual practice that I really effectively meditated. I would be fine at it before. I would use the Calm app with Tamara Levitt. I love that app. Um, they have great masterclasses on there too. So I love still using that as a resource, but one of the most helpful things that I've learned through this journey is to be fully present in every single moment. 
And one of the quotes that I love the most is the past and future exist only in your head. The only thing that is real is right now in this current moment. And that just really helps me release any stress I have about the future or anxiety or depression I have about the past and not overthink either of them. Obviously we need to recognize the future in order to like move forward. We need to like plan things and you know, acknowledge the future here and there and maybe even the past to work through some things. But the amount of overthinking that we do as humans about the past and the future and we do not live in the moment because we were living in a different time technically, whether it be in the past or the future, it's just astronomical. And again, there's nothing inherently spiritual about living in the moment and being present in every single moment, but every spiritual person will tell you that that is absolutely imperative. Some ideas that I found really helpful to get into the now and to really observe the present moment is to be the one that observes the mindless chatter in your head. The voice inside your head that is incessantly speaking or talking or whatever, the little voice, who's listening? You can become aware of your overactive mind and be the one to perceive it and be the one to observe it, and then it slows down. Also, when you go into every single moment to notice all the sensations that you feel around it, you don't just have to be focused so hard on the current moment. Um, because sometimes that can be overwhelming too, and it's not always possible. It's not always going to be possible. The other day I had a really bad day and I was just so anxious and could barely get off the couch. Not every day is perfect. I feel like this journey is not linear at all. I have days where I'm not spiritual in the slightest, don't feel like it, don't want to do anything, don't want to think about the present moment because I'm just so absorbed in my mind and the overthinking of everything. And it's hard to pull yourself out of that every single day. But to go into every task and moment and just be truly present in that moment. Again, it doesn't even have to be spiritual. The things I'm talking about in this video are not inherently spiritual. That's why it's different for me. It's not overly spiritual in the classic sense that you would think of. For me, they're tools that I use for my daily life that are found in spirituality. Uh, books, books, I got into some self-help books. I love self-help books anyway, but usually it's like anxious attachment relationship styles and things like that, you know? But I read The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, that book I've complete, completed. And although he gets into God and religion a little bit, and I'm, I'm not drawn to that at all, I'm not, I, I'm not, interested in that kind of thing, I'm open and I'm accepting that that's part of his spirituality and his pers perspective on spirituality. So I accept that. But there was some really helpful advice in that. Right now I'm reading The Power of Now, uh, which is a famous, famous book by Eckhart Tolle. And I hope that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know. I think it was written in like 99 or something like that. So I bought that book and I'm reading it. And I read that book and went into a situation that would normally have caused so much anxiety. I just read one chapter of the book and kind of meditated on it because there are sections in the book that he recommends you like sit and sit with and just like think about. So I meditated on it and I did not feel anxiety that whole entire day in a situation that normally would have caused so much anxiety. Another thing that I've discovered that I actually really enjoy is frequency music. I don't believe in like vibrations or like you have to be on this vibration to get what you want. You have to like vibrate at the same level as the things that you want. I don't know if I believe in all of that. And you're like attracting the energy of the universe. You have to be on the same vibrational level. Not really sure about that, but vibrational music, uh, frequency music, I mean, um, is phenomenal for meditation. But using it actually as a tool to stay present is really nice. I think that's why a lot of people do sound baths and things like that, because these frequencies, for some reason, really draw in your awareness and your attention, at least for me. And the music in general is really enjoyable. Like I love putting it on. I'm a fan of lo-fi music anyway. So it kind of is reminiscent of like non-lyrical, just nice music to have on. So I'll put on some frequency music while I read The Power of Now and just like zen out, you know? <laughs> Again, these things to me aren't inherently spiritual, but they are spiritual tools. So it's part of the journey, I guess. And I found listening to the frequency music was actually more effective in keeping me in the present than the app that I've been using for years and years. I found that I 
meditated more successfully when I used the frequency music versus the guided meditations. So I wanna talk about one way that I feel like it's affected me and it's going to sound weird. It's probably the most woo-woo thing I'm going to talk about and that is how I feel more in control of my dreams like my unconscious sleep and dreams, which I still believe are random. Like I don't believe in uh, dream interpretations or anything like that. Sometimes for fun, I'll look it up, but it's like, I don't know if necessarily um, it's my brain trying to work through something or tell me something. However, I swear, if I'm a psychic, the amount of premonition dreams I would have, I feel like I should tell someone because they're a little horrifying. <laughs> I do have anxiety dreams. I feel like when I'm more anxious, I have certain anxiety dreams that are traumatizing to dream about and go through. So I know this is gonna sound a little bit weird, um, but the other night I was having a nightmare and I was literally screaming in pain in my dream and I heard a voice say, no, we're done with that. Just like that, no, we're done with that. And I immediately woke up and it was almost like I was pulled out of the dream. Like I felt a pull sensation that I was just being taken out of that situation that I was having a nightmare about and that I was screaming about. It was like the part of my mind that was observing the dream going on, almost like the higher awareness that I've gained through this, these meditations and reading these books, teaching me about having a higher awareness to observe feelings and observe experiences instead of being so absorbed with them and identifying with them. It was like that higher awareness was like watching my dream and it was tired of that. So it just like turned off the TV, you know, it was just like, no, nah, we're done. We're done with that. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but I vividly remember hearing a voice saying, no, we're done with that. And then I woke up immediately <laughs> and it was so bizarre. I've never experienced that kind of control over my dreams and I wasn't even conscious about it in the dream. Like I wasn't lucid dreaming or anything. I wasn't controlling the dream, but it was like a part of me was just done with that <laughs> and decided to pull me right out of it. So I think a lot of people have been commenting about how I look happier in this apartment and how you know, I've just been getting so many comments about my energy being different or I'm like glowing or something like that, uh, which is so kind and I don't credit it to moving at all. I think it's fully the spiritual journey that I've been on in accepting just every moment as it is and experiencing everything as it is. Letting go of my worry and my fear and my control over things. And I just don't use these tools like everyone else, I think. I don't cleanse my cards with incense or seleniite, which I do have. Um, I don't cleanse anything. I don't charge my crystals. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm baby spiritual. You know, I'm like early stages. <laughs> I haven't fully committed to doing a bunch of spiritual stuff, but I do use a lot of spiritual tools as a means of introspection and self-development, which has helped me so much. And obviously it's not for everyone. So I'm not sitting here telling you that this is what you should do, obviously. Um, it's just been my personal experience. And like I said, it's so personal. We're all on different levels of what types of spirituality we identify with. So this is just my personal journey and my personal experiences in this. And it's still a weird, identity to me to be a spiritual atheist, but I I can't deny it any longer. I can't be in denial. I fully accept it. I am a spiritual human being. I don't know what's next for me in this journey, but I would love to hear your personal experience with spirituality if you have one, um, although I feel like everyone questions it at some point in their life. But let me know if you feel similar at all to anything that I said in this video and what your favorite tools are for your spirituality and what tools you use. And yeah, I guess that's it. So let me know if you want any other future videos on anything like this, um, anything specific that you want me to talk about. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.